Hello everyone, it is June 14, 2022, times about 12.13 CDT, it's lunchtime. This is Geo Rant 164, and it is like 93 degrees Fahrenheit out. I'm dying here, I can't handle this heat. Uh, so I am turning down the air so it doesn't blast and you don't hear it. It's actually my second time recording this because of that. But anyway, let's talk a little bit today about Precambrian mass extinctions, but I need to do a little disclaimer first. First I need to say, Obviously, I'm not a biologist. Most, if not all of you know that, but I'm also not a paleontologist. I don't want to say that past life doesn't interest me, but it's just not something I study, nor is it relevant to what I study, because most of you know I study the Precambrian, mostly the Paleoproterozoic and the Mesoproterozoic. The only way I ever study the Neoproterozoic, which is right before the beginning of the Phanerozoic at the Cambrian boundary, is if something I thought was Mesoproterozoic turns out to be ne Neoproterozoic, like the Jacobzo formation, which is now a group. I redefined all that in a paper, but I digress. Um, I will not be having any visual aids today either. I apologize for that, but I just want to address this as shortly as I can here. So let's get into it. So the question was, were there any Precambrian extinctions? And the answer is yes. There were definitely two and probably one near the Precambrian Cambrian boundary. I like I said I don't study that stuff, but if you want to know anything about it, I suggest you go to GeoGirl's channel, which I'll link down below. She studies this stuff and knows more about it than I've, you know, she's forgotten more than I know. So, but I'm gonna go back further. Most of us know, geologists know that we there are probably at least two other mass extinctions within the Precambrian. I'm going to touch on a third one that is not that ne end of Neoproterozoic one. And that's right at the beginning of the Paleoproterozoic. Not at the beginning, but, you know, 100 million years to 150 million years later. And it probably lasted a couple hundred million years. So we're talking 2,300 million years ago, plus or minus 100 million years. Now, this extinction is a was due to the great oxygen event, the GOE. Now that's when organisms started pumping free oxygen in the atmosphere. We know this from the rock record. We start to see rusty sedimentary rocks for the first time. I've talked about all this stuff before. So now life before stromatolites, I'm gonna talk about stromatolites here in a second. Actually, let's talk about them now. Stromatolites, these guys are hardy. They form mats, they form domal mounds, form columnar mounds and a whole bunch of things in between. I am not a stromatolite expert. How I've just described them is how I classify them to you if I see them in the field because I have no idea about their taxonomic nomenclature. Don't study them. I use them as markers, okay, in the Precambrian as I am a structural slash geochronology guy. So anyway, so now that you understand that what stromatolites look like, and these things have persisted, they appear in the fossil record in the Archean, and they persist to today. There's living stromatolites today, even the domal mounded ones in Australia. So these things have seen a lot and they keep surviving. So they're hardy and they kind of went through the GOE without a big deal because they're photosynthetic. They were part of the problem, if you will. So they were fine through this for the most part, but there's other organisms that were pumping oxygen that this destroyed. They went the way of the dinosaur. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna give you any details on any of that because I don't know the specific details of the species or type of uh, biology, but that's one that most geologists at least acknowledge who study the Precambrian. So, you know, I, I, I do go a little bit into the Archean, although I, I don't study it unless it's in relation to my Proterozoic rocks, usually. Anyway, I do do greenstone belts a little bit. Anyway, I digress. The next one, we are now at 1850 million, plus or minus 1 million years or 1.85 billion years ago with a B, and we have a firm date on this, and some of you might know what I'm talking about. I am talking about the Sudbury impact. Now, the GOE extinction before that, circa 2300 million years ago, was a biological mass extinction. Biology did this, biology changed the climate, and, that, and those kind of extinctions take a really long time in the geologic, well, even in the geologic record catastrophic extinctions like the Sudbury impact at 1850 million years ago are like that. 
Now, there is a mass extinction marker there as well. Stromatolites survived through this. They did have a little hard time, but they managed to make it through. But something else changed. We have a rocks called banded iron formation or BIFs, B-I-F. I've talked about these before too. I've taken you to BIFs in the Upper Peninsula and I, no, I haven't taken you to any in Ontario yet. But anyway, banded iron formations, we argue about their origins, but it's likely like carbonate rocks because once carbonate rocks start going, probably due to geo, the GOE event, I mean, there are some Archean ones, but they really get kicked kicked into high gear in the paleo proterozoic those could form either biologically carbonate rocks limestones double stones you know those type of things or they can precipitate out of solution i.e you know out of seawater or even fresh water and they still do that and the banded iron formations are probably a combination of this as well except we don't have macro fossils in these things to definitely show their biological and origin although they likely are and they likely could have been precipitated out of seawater. And at this 1.85 billion year old Sudbury impact, which by the way, even though it's highly deformed now due to about five orogenic or mountain building events, and it's largely eroded, the modern estimates, the new estimates are out. Uh, ILSG just did a couple abstracts on it. This crater was at least 300 kilometers in diameter. That's bigger than the one that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs. So this was a big hit into the earth and the crust was thinner there. It was near a shoreline we suspect, but actually a terrestrial impact. So banded iron formations at this time all but disappear. They continue not as much as they did up until, for, for about a billion years, up until 800 million years ago when they disappear from the record, rock record. Biffs are the only sedimentary rock Earth no longer produces. And why that is, don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the evolution of macro life or complex life, I don't know. But that occurred there. So, but there's another one, a third one that I suspect, but haven't really done any work on. And somebody could do this as a master's thesis or dissertation or something. I probably will never look into it. But I've taken you before to Horseshoe Harbor in the Upper Peninsula. It's way up on the Keweenaw, past Copper Harbor. And what you see there is you see the Oronto Group. The Oronto Group are sedimentary clastic deposits, mostly, that filled in the Mid-Continent Rift right after the Rift failed. And the Copper Harbor formation is the basal unit. It's mostly conglomerate and it becomes finer grained as you go up. Generally, I redefine this as like I did the Jacobsville in a, in a paper too, but I digress. That's not really relevant here. But there, at Horseshoe, there's this lens of silt and clay with some sandy parts. It's really, it's decently thick. And I gave it a formal name. But most geologists think this was, or not most geologists, some geologists think this was like floodplain of a river deposit or something like that. And remember, Mid-Continent Rift was terrestrial. So these, this, this is freshwater deposits here on land, likely. But here's the thing, it can't really be river deposits. Why? Because it has beautiful domal stromatolites in it, which I've shown you guys before. They're white, they're mostly calcareous, is one of the few parts that have a lot of uh, carbonate in them, but it's still dominantly clastic. And you can't really develop domal stromatolites in turbid water, or even in a floodplain, because those are too, you know, up and down. So it's probably a vast lake deposit or series of lakes. So anyway, you can see these domal stromatolites and right on the top of that, the Copper Harbor, this is within the Copper Harbor formation, it's a lens. The conglomerate starts to come back and the stromatolites are gone. And you might be like, well, that could be a preservation error, Steve. Yeah, it could be, or bias, and it could be, but here's the problem. Yeah, the alluvial conglomerates are not something stromatolites can grow on. I get that, I understand that. But above the Copper Harbor Formation is the Nunsuch Formation, which is largely uh, finer grain clastic rock, fine sandstones, mudstones, shales, 
And these are lacustral lake deposits and there are no domal stromatolites in them. Matter of fact, the rest of it, the Frida Formation and then the overlying Jacobsville group, we don't see any domal stromatolites. They're gone, all right? And this isn't the same area. This could be a regional thing, but it may be global. If that's the case, that means freshwater domal stromatolites went extinct at 1.085 billion with a B years ago, probably plus or minus a couple million years. But the overlying none such is, is from about 1.081 billion with a B years ago. And you might be like, what's up with the good, good date, Steve? Well, that's because we have some lakeshore trap intrusions that have been dated and other things like that. Anyway, that's for the times. So this could be a third type mass extinction right before the Neoproterozoic, okay, the very end of the Mesoproterozoic. But that's just something I've observed from walking around. Uh, matted ad, you know, stromatolites continue. Uh, we see those throughout the but even in the freshwater environments. And yeah, remember from the base of the Orgoronto group to the top of Jacobsville, that is all terrestrial. There's, we don't suspect there to be any marine deposits in that although some parts of the jacobs are questionable anyway this is 11 11 and it's getting long and i think that's all i have to say so summary real quick 2300 million years ago at least one mass extinction 1850 million years ago at least a second and apparently just a little bit past a billion we have a third of unknown origin which may not even be one and then we have the one that is talked about a lot at the very end of the precambrian but there's probably others within that as well so there's definitely two possibly three and maybe four at least but anyway that's it if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and i hope you learned something